Welcome back, slide roll junkies. Uh, this video will explain the Pythagorean scale, a scale which is not common on many American rolls. Uh, you'll see it on a lot of the German rolls, the European rolls. Um, but it didn't catch on on many American rolls uh, by the time we uh, stopped making slide rolls. Um, so this might be a little foreign to some of the American slide rollers, this scale. Okay, let's review a little trigonometry. If I have this triangle, which is a right triangle, hypotenuse length 1, uh, this angle here is theta. This is the same triangle, just uh, two copies. Um, then this side here with length y um, has length sine theta, and then this side length here uh, is cosine theta. Okay, um, so the interesting thing is, right, Forget the trigonometry, I just label that side y, then using the Pythagorean theorem, the other side is like square root 1 minus y squared, right? Okay. Um, if I start with the bottom side and label it length x, then this side is length square root 1 minus x squared. Okay. And this, this corresponds to the fact that, uh, sorry, this should say sine theta. This corresponds to the fact that, well, I can change sine theta to cosine theta by using the square root 1 minus the other 1 squared um, relationship, right? That, that's because, right, you take the complement of the angle, uh, you get this angle, right? And then the sine and the cosine of that other angle are just flipped, right? Remember your basic trigonometry here. Another way a lot of people uh, know this fact is they know this Pythagorean uh, identity, cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta is always 1 for any angle theta, blah, blah, blah. Even that angle could not be um, a first quadrant angle, right? And that corresponds to the fact that you're trying to make a unit circle, right? And unit circle should have this equation where cosine is the x and sine is the y, right? Okay, take a trigonometry class if you're lost. Um, now, at least when uh, sine and uh, cosine are positive, that is, is quadrant 1, right? If we're in quadrant 1, uh, then cosine theta is square root 1 minus sine squared theta, and sine of theta is square root 1 minus cosine squared theta. Of course, quadrant 1 corresponds to angles between 0 and 90 degrees, uh, which is exactly the kind of angles we have in a right triangle. Okay, awesome. So, what is this p-scale? This p-scale is, is a scale which computes with respect to d, uh, function square root 1 minus x squared, right? Now that function is its own inverse, so it doesn't matter whether you read d to p or p to d, uh, so it computes square root 1 minus x squared. Uh, the fact that it reads backwards or forwards is very convenient for calculation. Um, and so you can think of it as computing this function, or you can think of it as computing uh, sine from cosine or cosine from sine, uh, one of them being on the d scale. Okay, now of course, first quadrant angles. What is one use of this? Let's see. Uh, well, first, let me show you this slide rule. This is a logger X slide rule made in Czechoslovakia. Um, okay, you can see that even the case and uh, the construction of it is not, not as high quality as um, a high-end American rule or a nice German rule. Um, it gets the job done. Um, slides better than a lot of those Faber-Castell rules. Um, made out of some kind of hard plastic. Um, I don't think that the scales are engraved. They look printed on. Um, okay, so this is a self-documenting uh, slide rule, but it doesn't actually have the regular names printed anywhere. So it has only, uh, only the function names with respect to the C and the D, uh, which are labeled as X. So let's see here. The D scale here is labeled X. Here, the second from the top is the P scale, and it's labeled 1 minus X squared. So this P scale um, is across the top here. You can see on the right end it starts at uh, 0, um, and on the left end the last mark here is 0.995. Okay, uh, so let's use this to solve a problem. Um, so here's the problem. I have this right triangle, I know the hypotenuse length, I know this side length. What is the other side length? Okay, let's abstract this. Uh, so let's say I know the H and the A here and I want to know the X. Uh, first, I'm going to create a similar triangle by scaling by h, so dividing all the side lengths by h. Um, okay, now the nice thing is in the scale triangle, I can convert between this side length and this side length using the p-scale, exactly, right? So if I knew this, I could get this. If I knew this, I could get this using the p-scale because this is a 1. Um, okay, so in other words, x over h is square root uh, 1 minus a over h squared using the Pythagorean theorem. You can see why this is called the p-scale. 
Um, okay, and then to, to recover h, I'm going to take that result and multiply, sorry, to recover x, I'll multiply that result by h. Okay, so let's try it here. The first thing I need to compute is this a over h. So let's compute that 5.5 here on the d scale, I find the 5.5. Going to divide by 6.2, so I'm aligning that on the c scale, reading the result at the index, and... I've estimated that to be 0.887. So here's an example of a, a slide rule calculation where I'm going to have to transfer a number somewhere. Um, I can't just leave the result on the cursor. So I'm going to transfer that 0.887 to the P scale, the second scale from the top. Now the P scale uh, is not read on this slide rule, but you see it actually reads, reads in reverse. So be careful. So here's 0.8, 8, 5, 8, 6, 8, 7, 8, 8. So there's 8, 8, and 8, 8, 7. Let's put it about here. Okay, so I've transferred that 0.887 to the P scale, and then reading P to D is going to change, uh, is going to compute this part under the radical here. So reading right now on the D scale is the part under the radical, so all I need to do is now multiply by the 6.2. Uh, so to do that, I'm going to use the CI scale, which is read on this slide roll. Okay, found the 6.2 going to the end and reading result here on the D scale uh, there's two five six seven eight so before I estimated this at about two eight five looks like what we got okay now um, let's see how we would do this calculation without using the P scale on say a standard American slide roll uh, so to do this on a standard American slide rule, what I'd probably do is I'd say, okay, well, I'd start the same way. I compute 5.5 over the 6.2. Okay, coming to the end. Now what's reading on the D scale is actually the sine of that angle here. So what, what I've computed is the sine of that angle. Um, so if I read on the sine scale, that's the second from the bottom, the S scale, um, I should see the angle, which has that sign, and it looks like about um, 62, let's go with degrees down there, 62 degrees. Okay, so what I want to do is actually compute the cosine of that angle. So uh, if the sine is 62 degrees, um, then that's what I need to do to compute the cosine is compute the comp complement of that angle. So I'll go from 62 degrees to 28 degrees. Computing the complement manually here in my head. So there's 29, 28. Okay, so cosine of that angle should now be reading on the D scale, which is just labeled X here. Okay, so I've computed cosine of that angle. I'll multiply by the 6.2 to compute this length. Okay, and let's see. So here I'm reading about two five six seven eight two eight. That looks like more like two eight one or two eight two. Okay, so two eight one uh, or two eight two, depending how you get that last uh, place. So let's see which calculation is better. Uh, invoking the calculator here. So I'll do this style actually in the second style. So what I'll do is I'll compute 5.5 over the 6.4 uh, to compute the sine of that angle. Then I will resolve the sine uh, using arc sine. Uh, I think I mistyped that. 5.5 over 6.2. Okay. Then arc sine. Okay, you see we guessed that angle was 62, but it's here 62 point that. Um, okay, so now I'll compute the cosine. There's the cosine. And then I'll multiply by the 6.2. Okay, 286. So you can see actually the, the, the P scale calculation was the more accurate one here, right? Um, especially because, you know, that angle was way out here and it's hard to read it with a lot of accuracy. The best I could get was 6.62, right? Um, that, that's going to be the reason for the better accuracy of the P scale is the fact that on the sine scale, a lot of things bunch up here. Um, and you can't resolve it very accurately. Um, that's also the inspiration for the second example calculation I'm going to do here. So how could I accurately compute sine of 83 degrees? 
Uh, so let's so remember the second from the bottom scale here is the S scale on your normal slide rule. So let's say I wanted to compute sine of 83 degrees on the normal slide rule, then I've got to try to, let's see, there's 70, well there's, there's 80 right there, and then, you know, maybe, maybe about here, right? And then, then I'm trying to look on the, the D scale here, uh, of course it looks like 0.99, but the best I could probably do with the normal slide rule is, uh, you know, it's 0.99, right? Uh, so with the P scale, I can actually resolve uh, sine of 83 degrees to this resolution. How, how do I do that? Um, well, sine of 83 degrees is cosine of the complement, 7 degrees. Okay, so instead of 83 degrees, let me find on the S scale here, second from the bottom, the 7 degrees. 7 degrees. So if I find on the sine scale 7 degrees, try to do it accurately here. Okay, so I found on the sine scale 7 degrees, so what's reading on the D scale now should be sine of 7 degrees, right? But I don't want sine of 7 degrees, I want sine of 83, or sorry, 83 degrees, right? Um, so, um, sine of 83 degrees is actually cosine of 7 degrees, so I have the sine of 7 degrees appearing here, but where is the cosine? Well, Guess what scale converts sine to cosine with respect to the, the D scale? It's the P scale. So if the D scale is reading here sine of 7 degrees, then the P scale up here is reading cosine of 7 degrees. And guess what? We're actually in this high resolution range of the P scale. And you can see, look here on the P scale, here's 0 0.99, and here's 0 0.995, so here's 991, 992. Um, and I guess this before at 9924 um, actually now is looking looking a little more like 9925 but uh, in any case you've got at least the one more digit of uh, decimal place here uh, let's see what the calculator says for a sine of 83 degrees okay 9925 so actually might be set better now um, Okay, so you can see the p-scale is incredibly useful uh, for, for things involving right triangles, um, any, anything which has this kind of form, which is a common form, um, and also for resolving signs of angles close to 90 degrees with much more accuracy than a slide rule which does not have the p-scale. I hope you enjoyed this, and I hope you now understand the p-scale on your slide rule.